got a package in the mail that I wasn't even expecting because I totally forgot about this. This package was sent last year and for some reason it got stuck in the mail for over six months. Let's take a look at what I got. Months ago, I received an email from IC Station that they were sending me some little boards to review and I completely forgot about them. I just They got lost in the mail and just the other day I get this package that was mailed to me late last year and finally you know, six months later the package arrives so I don't know whether it was got misdirected somewhere or it was sitting in customs or what happened to it but anyway the package finally arrived I guess better late than never so we're going to look at what I received what is this first one This one is an amplifier board. So we've got a an input. Looks like use a 3.5 millimeter input. We've got power and we've got output to speakers. Let me go look this up and see what this is. I think it's probably about 50 watts per channel, but let me go and uh, look up the specs on this. Went and did a little more research and found that the last correspondence I had where this item was uh, October 29, 2019. And uh, from the, the person I was dealing with, they said that they, they would uh, inform me once they were shipped. And I never received another email to tell me that they had been shipped. So it was sometime after then, but to say they just arrived this, you know, this, this past week. So um, I don't know whether it was delayed in getting shipped or whether it's the whole pandemic thing uh, just slowed everything down coming from China. But um, anyway, uh, I've, I've had the bag sitting here for a week, so it's been thoroughly decontaminated before I opened it up, so don't worry about me because it's been a long time in transit, and I'm sure if there was anything on this, it would be clear by now anyway, if again, you guys are concerned about that. Uh, this one here is, um, what is this one? This one looks to be 45 watts per channel if you're powering it with 24 volts. It's 20 watts per channel at 12 volts. So we can feed it with a 12 volt DC jack from a standard 12 volt adapter. Um, input is through a 3.5 or through a standard three pin header, three pin plug and the speakers go on the output terminals. So this one has a volume control and this is just a straight amplifier board. So let me just hook this one up to some speakers. We'll give it some power and we'll play some music through it. So we'll plug our source in and our power supply. Power comes on and we get music. One thing to note, there's no power switch on this volume, it's just a volume control. So power is controlled by actually removing the DC power to it. Uh, amplifier is based on a TPA3116, it's a Class D amplifier of course. And um, you know some people are going to knock the Class D, they're going to say it doesn't sound good. Um, some class D's definitely do sound good. This one here, I don't see anything wrong with the sound. But it does sound to be pretty good to my ears. 
Not much to show you unless I could hook it up to the scope, I guess, and we can look at the waveform coming out of it, but it's going to be a, a, a pulse width modulated signal coming off the chip itself. It's filtered by these inductors and capacitors, which take the basically square wave PWM signal and convert it back to a, an audio signal by filtering out the switching. We can take a look at the switching signal. Okay, you'll see here, this is our our peak to peak, it's a square wave when there's no sound because it's a 50-50 duty cycle. And we are on, what voltage am I on? 20 volts, but I'm, I think I'm running a times 10 probe right now. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So there's our 12 volt swing. Here's our, our frequency on this is 402.5 kilohertz is the frequency. One of the nice things about these uh, storage scopes is you can do accurate measurements. So we're at 12.2 volts and that's going to be the supply voltage at 400 and, 402 kilohertz is the frequency. I've got channel 2 off because I'm only using one channel. And if I start to apply a signal we'll start to see that the I'll notice that the square wave or PWM signal will of course change with the music because that's that's basically how the music is or how they amplify is uh, this is filtered out and as the as the time base changes that's will it will it will change its cycle depending on the sine wave coming in so if we were able to slow this down and give it a very low frequency, you'd actually see this going back and forth with the frequency. But of course, it's not uh, a very low frequency, it's audio frequency, so but you'll see it jumping with the music. Now I'm feeding it 12 volts, so at 12 volts this amplifier is going to be 20 watts, I think that's what it said, 20 watts per channel and no 25 watts per channel but at 24 volts it will give you 50 watts according to the spec of the chip and that's what we're going on is the spec on the chip i'm not going to measure the um, the actual power an amplifier with a 400 kilohertz oscillator frequency 400 kilohertz uh, switching frequency should give you fairly good sound although there are units out now that have a much higher frequency and I've seen some that are in the 1.2 megahertz range. Obviously the higher this frequency the further away this source of potential noise is going to be. Now you're never going to hear 400 kilohertz and you're not going to hear any of the the sub harmonics of 400 kilohertz. Saying that some of the newer designs have moved this even further what it does is the higher the frequency the less dependent they are on larger inductors and larger capacitors to filter the switching signal out anyway that's uh, a little look at this 50 watts per channel hi-fi amplifier module link to this one is in the description and uh, we'll catch you in the next one real soon